So we last left off having baked all of our maps here. And here are the maps applied to our character. We have a normal map and an ambient inclusion map. And just to quickly show you the difference, I can add a uh, diffuse shader to my material here, um, which is just gonna give me like a base color on um, essentially. So if I connect this node to this, you can see the results of just our base mesh with no uh, maps applied to it. And if I reconnect this one instead, this is the result with the map. It takes a, a second to load. Um, and the differences are somewhat subtle, but they do they do honestly make a difference for your final result. So um, now that we have all our maps done, we are ready to move on to our texture paint. So let's go in and start that by first coming over to the texture paint tab. And um, I don't have a reference to pull up here, so I'm just gonna leave the 2D as it is essentially. Um, you can see here that I have the UVs for the eyes are uh, appearing on my 2D screen here. So let's just make sure we're on our main character first, come into our texture paint and here are our UVs for the body. So um, to texture paint this, I'm going to do it essentially the same way we have done with our other pieces before. We have our ambient inclusion, we have our normals. So let's add a new texture map here for base color. Um, you can call it, you know, whatever you like. I'm going to do this at 4K. Uh, I don't believe we need an alpha and we want the generated type to be blank. Um, the base color, you can pick a base color if you like, um, or you can leave it white and paint it in by hand. It's totally up to you. Uh, I'm just gonna get a jump on this by picking a sort of a brown, sort of a basic brown. Okay. So you can see that picking the color here will instantly fill your entire map here. We can also pull the base color up on the 2D preview here. And if your UVs are distracting you at all, you can always turn them off by clicking your viewport overlays button up here. Um, you can also disable, if you have some other overlays that you want to see, you can also just disable the UVs here by clicking the advanced drop down. Okay, so um, let's get started here. Um, Again, I'm gonna keep this character pretty simplistic. So I have my sort of base color here. It may be a little dark. I may wanna come in and lighten it at some point, but it does give me a decent jumping off point for painting my base color. So I'm gonna pick a secondary color for the face, a lighter color. So I'm gonna start by basing it off my base color. So I'm gonna grab the eyedropper here from the color selection and I'm gonna pick it from the 2D editor window. I found that when you pick from the 3D window, um, sometimes the coloring is off just because of the lighting. If you can see that the color here is actually much lighter than it appears. So um, I try to pick from the maps themselves when possible because it gives me a more accurate result. I'm actually just gonna pop quickly into the shader editor here and hook up my base color. Uh, because we had our ambient occlusion plugged into our base color input, uh, this one did not know where to go when I created it, essentially, so it's just left disconnected. Now, in the texture paint preview, we can, of course, if we are in solid shading mode and we have our base color selected, it, of course, will just show us that base color result. But I like to work uh, in my compiled material uh, from the start just so I can get a sense of where the normal maps are, where the ambient occlusions are. Um, <clears throat> And sort of that the information that comes from those maps i like to see them all compiled so i switched over to the uh, material viewport shading here uh, but i do need to hook up the base color in order to paint in it and still see all my compiled maps so i'm going to do this the same way i have in the past i'm just going to add a mix rgb node which is under color mix rgb i'm going to connect the base color to color one the ambient inclusion map to color two, the output to the input of their shader, which of course gives us this result. Um, this is obviously not correct because we need to change our mix mode to multiply 
to keep only the darker portions of the ambient occlusion map. And we're gonna turn the factor up to one to get the full shading effect. Okay, now we can hop back into the texture paint mode. Make sure you have base color selected in your texture slots here before you start, otherwise you will be painting on the wrong map. So I'm just gonna start by painting on this. I have my base color selected here and you can see now that I'm in the material preview mode, I'm getting a much more accurate color result. Whereas in the solid shader mode, it's sort of just overlaying this color over my uh, flat gray, which makes it darker than it should be. So that's another reason to paint in your viewport shading, in your material preview of your viewport shading. Okay, so I have my base color and let's save it to a palette uh, just so I can quickly get back to it in case I need to. Um, now I'm gonna use this color as my jumping off point and I'm just going to lighten it. Uh, you can lighten it either with the value slider or with this sort of visual version of it. And I'm going to desaturate it a little bit so we have sort of a lighter color here. Um, and then this is the color I'm going to be using for the face and the ears and the ends of the hands and the feet. We're just going to start by uh, painting in the basic areas where we want this color. And I do have uh, symmetry turned on for this as well, just to save me a little bit of time. Right there. Uh, for painting texture details, I will typically turn symmetry off as it gives a more natural result. But when I'm just painting the like large areas of like where certain colors are supposed to be, I will uh, I will typically turn it on just to save myself a little bit of time. And you can see that because I am using a uh, tablet and with pen pressure, I'm not getting the full strength of one here. So um, if I wanted to make sure that I was getting everything really solidly and opaquely colored and I could turn off the pen pressure and it would paint it in with the value of one regardless of the pressure. Um, so I hit X just there to switch to my secondary color and I'm just gonna set my secondary color to be my base color here so I can use it essentially as an eraser. And at any point, if I want to do the eyes, I can do that as well onto the same uh, texture image here. I just have to switch over to my eyes because they are a separate object here and then switch back into texture painting mode. And I'm just going to paint them black, like a solid black. So I to do that, I'm just going to select black from my palette here. I'm not going to go all the way down to zero because again that gives sort of an unnatural looking result when it's lit in the engine. Typically want to stay around 0 0.3, 0 0.2 to 0.3 as your lowest value here when you're shading something using physically based shading. 0.2. So I'm just going to come in and color in the eyes. And um, the eyes here do have backs to them, um, which, you know, is up to you whether or not you want to paint those in. You can always hide and paint, but um, it's really only important for our purposes to paint the visible portion of the eye. Okay, I'm going to hop back over to the main body of my character and back into texture paint mode. I'm going to grab my uh, lighter color here and just continue on uh, pulling out these areas where the uh, fur kind of wouldn't grow. So 
So you can see I'm getting a few issues with the projection settings here. Um, if I'm not careful with my brush size and my strokes, it does tend to project onto the back here. So you just have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, or, you know, do all your, your sort of base painting quickly and then come on and clean up that area <clears throat> at a later date. If you're, especially if you're trying out colors and things, I wouldn't worry too much about getting it perfect because you're just going to have to paint over it again anyway if you don't like the color. But um, get sort of a loose idea and then you can always come in and change the colors and then clean up once you're happy with the final design. Okay, let's do the hands as well. You can see there's a little bit of overshoot here from my uh, my brush kind of catching the leg right here and it was being mirrored over here so I, I caught it before it um, I moved on but um, yeah just be careful with the projection when you're using sort of texture painting at, at funny angles like that you can see I caught a little bit on my leg here as well you can just come in and erase that out Okay, so I wanted to find this little uh, line a little bit. It's a little bit blurry right here. So I'm just gonna come in with my base color and zoom in a little bit and make this a little bit more of a harder line. I'm just filling this in because it, it didn't get, you know, fully filled in with my opaque stroke here. Um, it's not critical to get this area behind the eyes really clean, but um, I'm just, because I know it's there, it's I'm just going to make sure that it, it looks okay, even though we'll never see it. We got one last area. Gonna rotate my light around a little bit so I can see a little bit more clearly. Come in and fill in this area as well. I 
Okay, there we go. We got sort of a uh, Curious George type character now. Okay, so if you're uh, bothered by the sort of plastic sheen that this character has on them, um, we can adjust the roughness values as well. I'm just going to save my base color map uh, before I move on, just so I don't forget. Uh, let's call it base color, sure. Um, so if you're bothered by this sort of uh, sheen of roughness, you can uh, you can either manually adjust the roughness value here in the shader. It's at 0.4, which is sort of middle low. Uh, we can up this slider a little bit to give it a more matte look. Uh, or you can take the time if you want like the uh, fur area to be rougher than the skin face area. We can take the time and do a texture paint. And in fact, we might do that because currently if we up this whole roughness, it also ups the roughness of the eyes, uh, which we don't want. We want the eyes to remain nice and shiny. So um, let's make a roughness map for this character. Now, in our previous pieces that we've made, all we have done is uh, use the ambient inclusion map and tweaked it a little bit and plugged it into the roughness because that's what made sense for the types of pieces that we were doing, but it does not make sense for this piece. So we're just gonna make a new roughness map. So um, let's come into the texture paint tab. Now it doesn't matter if you have, if you're in texture paint mode for the character or the eyes because they're sharing a material. So, um, you know, to paint on the eyes, we need to select it, but uh, because they're sharing the same material, when we're adding a new texture slot to it, we can just add it to either one. So um, let's add a new roughness. Um, let's just call it roughness. And we'll keep it the same resolution as our other textures. Uh, the default for roughness colors, um, I like to put it at a 0.5 gray because that's just like a very medium value. Um, and then I can, you know, make things smoother or rougher as I need. So let's go ahead and add that. And um, let's just pop over to the shading. And because we had nothing plugged into our roughness, it looks like it plugged in just fine. So um, this is what a 50% roughness value looks like on our asset. So let's get in and start painting out some areas of difference. So I'm going to come over to the eyes first. And um, roughness, the way painting roughness and, and other sorts of maps like this, I guess we have not discussed it. We've only really painted base color, which was easy because we were just selecting our colors that we want to appear and painting them. But the way that grayscale maps work, things like roughness, metallic, uh, height, is that um, it interpolates between a value of zero and one. Uh, and zero means full black and one means full white. So in the case of roughness, a value of zero would be a solid black value, um, such as this one right here. And if you were to come in and paint a value of zero, of full black onto any part of your mesh here, it would be rendered as fully uh, smooth and fully shiny here. And if I were to come in with a value of pure white, it would be fully matte. So zero is uh, no roughness and one is full roughness essentially. So I'm just gonna come in with this uh, darker value here to paint the eyes in as shiny. And I think I want to paint the uh, sort of the fur area in as a little bit rougher than 0.5. I like the 0.5 for the skin areas. That's pretty good, but um, let's come in and uh, paint rougher areas for the fur essentially. And it may be in fact quicker if what I do is I just paint this, this uh, rough value in over my whole roughness map and then paint the areas of smoother information in afterwards because there's more, more of my surface area is gonna be rough than it is gonna be smooth. So uh, it probably would have been better to do my base color as a, a fully rough one value instead of a 50% gray, but um, I mean, it really doesn't take much time to just come in and, and fill this map in with, with a full, a blank white color here. Okay, so you may get some like um, shading artifacts. If you just move your camera around, it should click and snap back into place. 
properly. So, okay, I painted in this whole thing as white now. I'm gonna come in with my black, not totally zero black, but just above it. And um, when I was talking about values of like not putting things down into uh, too low of a value, that was for base color only. For grayscale maps such as roughness and metallic, you can use full black and full white. And in fact, you probably should, especially for the metallic values. Uh, we've not done anything metallic, but the principle is the same. It's typically, you don't get a lot of grayscale values in metallic maps, but the areas that are not metallic are fully black and the areas that are metal are fully white. Okay, so I think for the um, skin, I liked it about 50%. So I'm gonna just slide it up. It doesn't have to be, oh, I was gonna say, it doesn't have to be exactly at five, but it looks like I eyeballed it and it happened to be exactly at five but um, it's really up to your discretion. Now, this change might be a little bit harder to see in the material preview uh, because these values, um, just because of them being interpolated as roughness, it's easier to see them when your uh, light is at sort of more of a glancing angle, which we can do by moving things around. Um, but it also may be easier just to come into your solid shading mode and paint it in that way. And of course, I'm still on the eyes, so that's why my painting is not working. To texture paint. So I'm gonna try to move my sun around till it's not totally in front, but I get, I get a little bit of a glancing angle, but I can still see what I'm doing. And you can see here now, uh, with the proper object selected, I can come in and just paint in these sort of smoother skin patches. And if I, I'm never not sure because it is so subtle, this difference, um, I can always come in, turn on my UV overlays and just make sure like all of the areas are being covered here based on my UVs. I just switched over to solid viewport shading so I could just view the roughness map in isolation uh, because it's a little bit easier for me to visualize what I'm doing that way. getting some area um, errors in the projection settings for the oops, for the uh, texture here but you just have to be a little bit careful I'm gonna come in and sample my base color here I think it's just white it is just white but and just use that as an eraser and now I can use the X key on my keyboard to just flip between those two colors and get nice smooth lines And I'll periodically switch back to my material mode to just make sure that everything is looking the way it should. Well, it looks like I missed a little bit with my color map there. So I'm just gonna switch back to my base color here. And uh, luckily I have saved all my colors. So I can just come in and fix that really quickly. If you're ever worried about this like over paint phenomenon where if I like painted like that, it would come over to the head. Um, it can be really irritating, but 
sometimes it's best to just try to angle your camera so there's no part of your mesh is behind it and uh, that won't happen. Okay, let's come back to our roughness map and continue our painting here. Oops, but of course we need to pick our color. So I'm just going to sample it from my 2D texture and then I'm just going to save it to save myself some time uh, if I have to keep doing that. If you're ever running into issues with your color sampling, um, you can check up in the render properties. There's this tab called color management. And I think by default, it is set to something called filmic. And if you set it to standard, you'll get uh, closer color matches for the most part. I believe this was just at 0.5. I'm not sure why it's not um, sampling that color correctly, but let's just save it so we don't have to worry about it again. Um, it's another good reason for creating the palette, so sometimes your color samples just don't uh, sample the way you want because of different uh, settings in your programs and things. So I have sort of the very basics for my texture paint in for this character. Let's go ahead and save our maps just so we don't lose any work. Um, and we can see here that there are some issues still with the hands and the feet. Uh, we can come in and clean these up. But uh, once we do clean, have these all cleaned up, uh, we want to talk about where we can further go to push this texture a little bit further. Um, although it is, you know, it's pretty good. It's it's sufficient for our purposes and all that. It um, it's just a little bit plain, a little bit boring, and we just want to make sure that this the textures on this character, even though they're simple, we want them to pop a little bit more. So um, what I might try to do with this character is add some color variation to the main sort of fur area. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do that. One is just by painting straight on it, or um, the alternative would be to use an alpha. So for something like this, I might use an alpha that has sort of a fur texture to it and paint maybe some lighter and some darker streaks that are going along the direction of the hair growth. So um, 
I'm going to pause the video and find a good alpha for that because I think that that is the way I want to do it. And when we come back, we'll talk about uh, doing some detail painting for this character. Okay, so we have all of our base colors in. Let's now spend some time uh, talking about a little bit of detail painting. Again, we're not gonna do too much crazy detail because we do want this to remain sort of a cartoonish style, but um, I do want to make these textures just pop a little bit more and be a little bit more interesting. So um, I'm gonna paint a little bit of surface detail in with an alpha and um, we're going to be using sort of a fur alpha. Now, as far as um, where to find something like this, I honestly just did a Google image search for fur alpha, and um, there's a lot of different types of resources you can try out here. Um, just make sure that, um, you know, if it's for a personal project, should, you should be okay. But, um, you know, if you are planning on monetizing anything, make sure that you buy the rights properly to anything that you use that is made by somebody else. But um, anyway, so I just did a quick Google search for fur alpha and I found one that I liked. And um, that's the one we are going to be using here, but use whatever alpha uh, you find that works for your particular case. So um, I'm gonna set up a texture mask alpha here so that I can use the alpha and, and sort of use it as a mask to interpolate these colors here. So um, let's set up our texture mask first. So um, we're going to come down here. We're in the active tool and workspace settings for the texture paint mode. Of course, we're going to come over here to where it says texture mask and we're going to create a new slot for it here. Um, you can call it whatever you like, uh, but we first need to assign the image that's going to go in here. So to do that, we're going to come down to this tab here, this texture properties tab, and we're going to select a new texture properties. And that will give you another blank preview here. From here, we can open it up from wherever we have saved it on our hard drive. I have a library of alphas that I have kept over the years. We're gonna be using this one. So this is the alpha that I'm going to use. Again, um, I don't own the rights to this, so I can't provide it, but I uh, use whatever for alpha that works for you. Um, so, uh, we need to come back into our tool settings here and now under our texture mask, mask slot, if we click on the image itself, we now have this image that we can use. Um, the last thing we need to do before we start painting with it is change the mask mapping from tiled to viewplane. Otherwise, we're going to get some weird gaps uh, between areas of tiling here. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color for this. So I want to do one layer of sort of darker colors here and one layer of lighter. And I think that will uh, give this some more depth to it. So I'm going to select my base color here for my starting point, And then I'm going to open my color palette and I'm just going to drop the value a little bit. We want this to be pretty subtle. So um, I'm not going to go too dark with this, but I am going to save the color here. And um, basically what I can do now is just come in with my brush with this uh, texture mask applied. And now when I paint it, you can see that it's it's taking the color I selected and uh, using the mask to interpolate some strokes for it. So um, what I need to do here is change the stroke spacing because uh, right now these are obviously way too close together and we're getting some weird uh, tiling sort of issues here. So I am just going to, under this stroke panel, I'm going to leave it on space, but I'm going to change the spacing to something really high, like 50%. So now when I drag down, these are more spaced out. I'm also going to turn off my symmetry here uh, because this is the type of detail that if it is perfectly symmetrical, it will look a little bit strange to the eye and um, it's better to have sort of asymmetrical details for this type of thing. Now, I do think this is a little bit too dark, so we're going to go a little bit lighter. Ah, I 
see the issue. I have um, this in the texture as well as the texture mask, and I don't need this in the texture. I just want it in the mask. Um, that is why I was having issues with the color. As you saw just now, it was coming out much darker than it should have. Um, so if you p accidentally place your alpha in the texture, it's just going to use this to interpolate directly onto your, your mesh, including the colors. And since this is a black and white image, all those blacks were coming through really strongly. So make sure you have it set in your texture mask and that your texture itself is blank. So now I should be able to come in with my slightly darker color and we can see we have a much more subtle effect. So I'm just gonna come in and really lightly brush in the direction that I want sort of the fur to go. And if I want like larger, um, larger clumps of fur, I just have to change my brush size. Now, of course, zooming out or increasing your brush size will uh, slow down your viewport a little bit, just as um, in all the texture painting and the sculpting that we've done before. The more changes you try to make in a single stroke, essentially, the, um, the longer it's going to take to calculate it. Just moving my uh, light around so I can see this side here. And I am getting a little bit of overshoot right here because I didn't mask these areas out or anything, but I'm gonna come in and clean those up afterwards. I'm not too concerned about it. We have all our colors saved to our palette, so the cleanup should go pretty quickly. So um, if you're coming down the arms and you find that the angles aren't right, if this is not, if you want this to follow the direction of the growth more uh, accurately, you can always change the angle of your, um, of your alpha right here in the angle. So if I was to change this to like 90 degrees, now you can see it's flowing in a more horizontal direction um, if that's what you want. See, it would be 270. Yeah. But maybe a little, it's not exact um, because this isn't going exactly straight. Uh, the arms do curve a little bit downward, so maybe something like 250 would get me closer to what I want. Oh, other way, 280. So yeah, now that's following the direction of the arm a little bit more closely. And you might want to come in with your base color and just try to blend some of these areas out where you're getting lines from the, uh, basically the uh, viewplane of your camera being in a certain way when you texture it. You just want to move it around and make sure it looks good from every angle. And the way I like to do that is by just blending it back and forth until I get something that looks decent. Same thing on the other side.
Looks like I have a little error right here. Um, should be no big deal. I should be able to paint over it. Although, this might be caused by an issue in my UVs themselves. So let me just troubleshoot this really quick. So this face here, I mean, it's honestly, as much as I don't like to make mistakes while I'm recording, sometimes it's helpful uh, to see how these things are troubleshooted. Yeah, it's caused by this little overhang here, um, which is not great and probably something I should have caught earlier on in my UV unwrapping process, but I'm just gonna scoot that in a little bit so that that disappears. Okay, uh, let's return to texture paint. And I need to pull my texture mask back up. And I wanna sort of blend some of these areas in. So I'm using my base color here to just knock back this sort of shadowing effect. And then I'm hitting X because I have them both set to my, uh, my background and foreground color here to switch back to my shadowing color. And let's Okay, so already this has added a fair amount of depth. And um, if, again, if I were doing this for production, I would probably spend some time really blending these, these areas in together. But um, I'm gonna continue to move forward for the purposes of the demonstration, of course. Um, I did miss a little area in the front here. Let's just get that. So I basically just got all the areas that are fur sort of uniformly covered with this shadowing color. Now, um, I do want to do a quick uh, sort of light coloring pass before I go in and clean up these like areas where I've sort of come over the line here. Although um, if you wanted this, you know, stylistically, it's totally up to you. Um, you know, you could bring down a little bit of like overhang so it looked like the fur uh, doesn't just end so abruptly right here. You could, you know, bring it in and then even do it with the base color as well. You could bring in a little bit of like fur overhang. And I might, I might go in ahead and do that. Um, but I want to do my light pass first. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from my base color. I'm just going to bring up my color sampler thing and I'm going to just up it a little bit in value and I'm going to desaturate it just slightly. So let's save this color. Uh, I know it looks pretty close to this one, but they are different. And uh, now I just want to do a pass of essentially the same thing with the fur texture uh, just to add even more depth to this. So I'm just going to come in and go over it the same way here. And this is what's really going to make it pop.
got a little bit of stretching based on the uh, viewplane there, so I just went in with my base color and uh, sort of blended that out so it wasn't quite so stretched and I can come over it uh, more properly. So the problem with doing sometimes uh, these round shapes is that you get stretching towards the edges, but um, you just have to be kind of diligent about checking all your areas and making sure that uh, it's not too dramatically stretched so it stands out in a strange way. I'm also trying my best to maintain a consistent uh, alpha scale. So you'll see that uh, because of the way the Blender Texture Painter is set up, if I zoom in really far and I uh, do, do a stroke, the texture will be much smaller because the brush stays constant on your screen size regardless of how zoomed in you are. So sometimes you, know, you get a little bit zoomed in and then you have a scale for the fur here that's much smaller than here. Um, and I want to avoid that. Some variation is okay, and in fact it is good because um, it adds more sort of interest and detail to your character, but you don't want really dramatic changes in the scale of the fur. It's going to look strange. So I'm just hitting all the sort of vertical parts of the body first so I don't have to change my angle quite so often uh, because if you look at the alpha you see that, that the fur is flowing in sort of general downward direction so if I hit all the vertical areas where the hair is naturally growing that way first I can then come in and do the arms and I won't have to keep switching the angle back and forth. So that's pretty much all of it. Let's just come in with a 90 degree angle or thereabouts and do the arms. Oops. 90 degrees would be the other arm. This one looks pretty good. Um, and then for the back side, we need to flip them. So I'm actually going to come and do the back of this arm first. And then we're going to switch this over to 270 or somewhere around there. Whatever works for the angle of your arms should be around that general. Uh, general value if you're modeling in T-pose, which you should be. Okay. So there's still some, you know, general sort of patchiness going on here, um, which I may clean up a little bit um, off camera, but I think you get the idea of what I'm going for here. Although I do, um, I wasn't planning on doing a little fur overhang here, but I do actually quite like it now that I see it. So let's come in and do that really quick, just to give a little bit more blending between the areas of skin and the areas of fur here. 
So before I do anything, let's save our image just so we don't lose any of the work that we've already done and we can just keep continue to paint on it. So I'm coming in with the base color and uh, just doing a little bit of blending between these two areas. And I may need to come in and change my angles for these areas around the face. Of course, I can always set my background color to be the, uh, the color of the skin itself and sort of blend out any errors. I'm just going to hit this two button to duplicate this brush. Um, so now I have a uh, basically a copy of it and I can switch between the two. So um, the reason I'm doing this is because there are areas that I want to clean up here, but I don't want to use this alpha while I'm trying to do cleanup. And uh, I don't want to have to keep uh, deleting and re-adding this alpha in every time I want to switch back and forth. I can instead just switch back and forth between brushes here. Now, we talked a little bit about this when we did sculpting, and this is the same principle as when we added a uh, texture to our sculpting brushes. We duplicated the brush and set the uh, texture samples and the alphas and things on the duplicates so that we didn't lose our initial brush settings. So um, here's the original uh, draw brush here, so I can just uh, get rid of the texture mask in this one. And now I have my duplicate here with the texture mask still on it. So um, what I can do if I want to come in and clean this up, I can just switch to my solid one and we can rename these as needed. So we could name this one solid. We could name this one texture. And now we can super quickly just by clicking there, uh, switch between them when I need to come in and, and do some areas of clean up without the uh, texture on. So um, we are about 30 minutes into the detail painting portion here. So um, I'm gonna take a quick break and um, if you like, you can continue to do these sort of uh, fur overhangs across the whole thing. I'm gonna leave it here for now um, because you get the idea. I'm gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna talk about how to just do some uh, shadows and highlights and clean up and then we will be wrapping up our texture painting portion.
Okay, welcome back. We are going to wrap up our texture painting in this video. Um, I just wanted to take a little bit more time to uh, uh, paint in some shadow and some highlights to really make this pop. Now, um, you should always look at your model from various angles and uh, zoom uh, distances. And this is a little bit more modeled um, than I would like it. If I was doing this for production, I would probably spend more time blending in these furs here. And I maybe just went a little bit too much in the contrast, um, like too far away from the the base color. So, um, and, you know, if I wanted to blend this a little bit more, I would probably come in with the base color itself and the texture mask ready to go. And I would just do one more pass to just sort of knock this effect back a little bit. So um, if you're wondering how to get these a little bit less of an intense sort of fur pattern, that's how I would go about it. Um, the, it, it, you know, obviously your fur won't be quite as stand out, but there is still a subtle effect when you come over this with the base color. So um, that is how I would go about blending this if this is too extreme for your liking. Um, but, and that is not gonna be the focus of this video. I may, I may do some of that off camera, but um, the focus of this video is going to be talking about uh, getting in here to some of the face, especially into these shadows and um, highlights on the skin region. So um, let's dive into that. I'm going to switch back to my solid brush that we made in the last video. And I'm going to use my basic skin color as my jumping off point for picking my shadow and highlight colors. I'm gonna start with the shadows because that tends to produce the best results if you do shadows first and then highlights. And I'm just gonna drop this ever so slightly in the value region. So this is our new color. Let's save it before we do anything else. I am gonna turn on my uh, pressure sensitivity for my pen here. And I am gonna take the strength down to something closer to 0.3 because I want this to be a little bit more of a subtle effect. So I'm just gonna come in and start uh, drawing in my shadow highlights. I'm also gonna turn on symmetry just to speed this up a little bit. So point three, it's a nice subtle effect and you can see here in the uh, 2D map that it is in fact painting in shadows even if they're a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna resist the urge to up my strength a little bit because I don't want these to be true, too dramatic. So I'm just gonna come in along the lines basically of our normal map and um, anywhere there there's crevices, I'm just gonna do one really quick pass over it to get a more subtle shadow effect. Um, this, of course, works in conjunction with your ambient occlusion map, which uh, produces a similar effect, but I find that uh, getting in there with the color as well just really makes your textures and your models pop, and it really shows off all the hard work that you did in the sculpting phase, which uh, the detail of which can get kind of lost after it's transferred uh, to a, a low poly bake. You really want to make sure that you're showing off all those details that you work so hard to put in. So I'm going to do the same thing on the ears here. And just kind of shade in this sort of crevice here. And we could go in and do this more generally for the rest of the body and the hands. I'm just gonna focus on the face for this video because we have uh, done this several times at this point. Uh, it should be somewhat familiar to you, but um, I just do wanna show you the whole sort of process of making a character start to finish. Okay, so I've got some good shadows in the face and I've saved my color in case I need to paint any more. So I'm gonna come in with a highlight pass now. Um, basically same brush settings and everything. I'm just gonna change the color. So I switched back to the base, the middle color here um, to start. And I'm just gonna push it up in the value a little bit. 
And then I'm just going to come around any areas that I want to highlight. So like these brows, especially these nice, big, um, expressive eyebrows. I really want to highlight those. So I'm just going to come in with a super light touch and, and make sure I'm blending it well into the shadows as well as into the base color. And you can see the effect here. Um, if you are already maxed out in your brightness here, you can always drop this saturation slightly to push it closer to white and that will give you an even stronger highlight. I'm going to come in and highlight these lids as well. And um, I haven't changed my spacing back. I did forget to do that. Let's put it back to 10 so we don't get these gaps. Yeah, we'll get a much smoother stroke this way. Very nice. He just looks a lot more uh, vibrant and awake with those eyelid oh, with those eyelids highlighted in. I'm gonna come around the nose and highlight here as well. And sort of the top of it. Um, I'm gonna highlight this ridge right here. Um, I'm going to use a fairly large brush size for this because this is a really big area. And if you think about the way that light would sort of diffuse over the surface of it, um, y you can achieve that a little bit easier and blend it into the base color a little bit easier with a larger brush stroke. Some of the most common uh, beginner mistakes when it comes to 3D art is... Uh, well, the first that we've talked about in the sculpting section was uh, subdividing your mesh too high too early in the beginning stages of your sculpt. You end up with sort of a wobbly, uh, sort of lumpy result. And the second one when it comes to more digital painting um, and texture painting is not working with a large enough brush size. People tend to want to work with like very small brushes and do little details, but um, you just, your result doesn't end up as, as smooth and as blended as it should be when you do that. Okay, let's come in and do some work right here to highlight down here. And we'll highlight the chin. And we'll highlight the cheeks as well, just sort of around this uh, three shape. Okay, great. So um, I would go ahead and do the same thing with the hands here. Uh, the hands need a little bit of clean up from the sort of fur painting section. So you can up that back to one and, and clean this up. But I would do the same thing here. I would shade sort of in between the fingers and um, highlight the tops. And if you're ever unsure of where you should be painting shadows and where you should be painting highlights, your ambient inclusion map is a really good guide for something like that. Um, it's just gonna, it's gonna let you know the area. So anywhere that's shaded in your AO map um, is a pretty safe bet that if you came over with your shadow color, um, if you came over it with your shadow color, it would uh, look really good if you just match those. Exactly. Well, not exactly. If you match those roughly, um, it's probably going to look pretty good here. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup on this hand. So, um, for example, for the hand, what I would do is I would come in and I would take my darker color here. I would take a low strength, like down in the 0.3 region, and just really gently shade 
the insides of the fingers. I have some artifacts here from not doing enough cleanup before I started this, so I apologize for that, but, um, you know, you get the idea. So yeah, coming in with the darker, oh, this one's just a mess. Oh, I'm getting some overshoot onto my uh, body there. I'm just gonna control Z to undo that and uh, move my camera around to a better position. Okay. So now with the darker color, you can come in and, and shade just like the very inner corners of the fingers where the least light would fall, basically. Switch back over to my lighter color and sort of fix that overshoot there. And then I would come in with like a highlight color which I, of course, forgot to save. It's okay. We'll do it now. And then just brush them really gently, even uh, more gently than this. Brush it really gently over just the tops of the fingers. And then you could also do the same thing with the palms here. Um, let's clean this little area up. And then what I would do is come in with my shadow color and just come around really gently into these uh, lines for the palm that I created. And you could even uh, do the same thing around the interior, like inside of the knuckles. A little bit of error coloring right there. And, you know, come in and blend these harsh lines, obviously, but, um, come in around and then with the lighter color, the highlight color, on a really brief pass, you can just, um, just the, the fleshiest areas of the palm, you know, you just want to highlight those to make them stand out a little bit more. Okay. So, um, I'm going to wrap up this video right here. Um, I might do a little bit of blending work off camera for the fur colors. Um, just using the method I showed you over here at the top of the video. Um, and then once we have that done, we will have basically our complete character and we are from there going to uh, look at how to rig it for animation and how to bring that into Unreal.